Let's talk about the directional derivatives for the multivariable functions, but we are going to start again with the single variable functions. So let's say we're given a curve for the single variable functions as a y is equal to the f of x. And if we are find ourselves at this point a, and if we're moving in this direction, I would like to know how fast the the heat of the surface is changing. I'm on a hill of the mountain and I'm going in this direction and I would like to understand. I would like to know how fast the heat of the surface, heat of the ground, is changing. So in order to do this, I need to just evaluate the derivative of the function at this point AE with respect to the x, right? It's going to be derivative of the f with respect to the x at this point A. So this is going to tell me how fast the surface is changing with respect to the in the direction of the x. So now if I find myself in a real mountain was a three-dimensional space, right? So I can move in not only to the forward or backward, I can move to the right or left, or I can move to any other direction as well, right? And here I would like to know, if I go in this direction to the right, right? So if I would draw the coordinate system, right? Like this, so this is going to be the y direction and this is going to be x direction. So the rate of change of a surface of the heat of the mountain in the direction of the y would be the partial derivative of the z with respect to the y. And the rate of change of a surface, the heat of the mountain, with respect to the in the direction of the x, with respect to the x, would be the partial derivative of the z with respect to the x. But the problem is we can move to many other directions as well, right? We can move in this direction, and this direction, and this direction. So I would like to know, so if I'm given a direction, right, some vector which points out to this direction or to this one, what is the rate of change of the heat? of the mountain in that direction. So this is what we would like to understand and what we would like to calculate. So let's talk about this with other graphs which are less fancy. So we are given a surface was the function z is equal to f of x and y. And I, in order to understand the rate of change in the x direction, I would like to fix the y to be equal to the y zero. So all the points along this curve have one y coordinate, they are y zero. So I would like to choose the t points, right? So the p zero is going to have the coordinates x zero and y zero, and the p one is going to have the coordinates, so y zero is going to be fixed, right? And I would like to move a little bit, right? It's going to be x zero plus some h or delta x. Then the rate of change of the heat in the x direction would be the difference of the heats of, the, of the three points. It's going to be the fun of the heats, right? So the difference of the heats which can be found by substituting the points to this function because this function always gives me the heats, right? So this is going to be x0 plus the h y0 minus f of x0 y0 divided to the h. So this gives me the rate of change, and if I take its limit when h goes to the zero, so it's going to give me the instant rate of change of the heat in the direction of the x. And I can denote this as a partial derivative of the f with respect to the x. So the same story when I move in the y direction. So if I'm given a surface, if I fix the x to be equal to the x zero, right? I'm not moving in the x direction at all. So the x is fixed. So I'm moving only in the y direction along the surface, right? So again, the p zero is going to have the coordinates x zero and y zero. And the p1 is going to have the x0 is fixed, and the y0 is going to be changed, y0 plus the h. And the rate of change, the instant, the rate of change of the surface, right? The heat is always, is, um, I can find the heat of the surface always using the function f, right? Because the surface is given as the function f of x and y. The rate of change of the surface in the y direction would be the heat at the point p1 minus the heat at the point P0, divided to the h, right? When I take its limit when h goes to the 0, it is going to give me the instant rate of change of a surface in the direction of the y, which is denoted as the partial derivative of the f with respect to the y. So now let's face to the another problem. We're given a surface 
in the x, y, z coordinate system was the equation z is equal to the f of x and y. And I'm, we found ourselves at a point P0, and we would like to move um, in the, along the surface in the direction of some unit vector u. So now, in order to understand the rate of change of a surface, between this, uh, if I move in this direction, I would like to find the coordinates of these two points. Okay, so the coordinate of the P0 is given as x0 and y0, and the coordinates of the P1 would be, so if I'm moving in the direction of the unit vector u with the components a and b, then this would be x0 plus the ah and y0 plus the bh. Right? So do you remember when we made the equation of the line along some vector u, and if you are given some point p, was the components x0 and y0, so the equation of the line along this vector u would be p0 plus the u multiplied to some step. Right? The same thing we're going to, we're going to do this. So h in, is, in our case, is one step. So the rate of change of a surface in the direction of the u vector would be the height at the point p1 was the coordinates x0 plus ah plus y0 plus bh minus the height at the point p0 was the coordinates x0 and y0 divided to the h. When I take its limit, when h goes to the 0, it's going to give me the instant rate of change in the direction of the u. Right? And this is denoted as the directional derivative of the f was in the direction of the u at the point x0 and y0. Okay, so obviously this definition helps us to understand what is the meaning of the directional derivative. So the directional derivative tells us how the surface is changing, how fast the surface is changing in the direction of the vector u, but we usually use another formula in order to calculate the directional derivatives. So let us try to write down this formula. So if f is a differential function of the x and y, and then f has a directional derivatives in the direction of the unit vector u with the components a and b, and this directional derivative is equal to the partial derivative of the f, multiplied to the a component of the vector u and partial derivative of the f multiplied to the component b component of the u. So in order to try to understand how it works or whether it works, so let's let's try to choose the two vectors, the unit vectors as the standard unit vectors. So if the u would be just the i, so the i would have the components 1 and 0, right? So the directional derivative of the function in the direction of the x Right? So the directional derivative of the f in the direction of the x would be f, the partial derivative of the f, multiplied to the first component of the i, which is 1, plus the partial derivative of the f with respect to the y, multiplied to the second component, which is going to be simply the partial derivative of the f with respect to the x, which is true, right? So when we move along, uh, so only in the direction of the x, the rate of change of the function in this direction would be the partial derivative of the f with respect to the x. So the same as if, you, if I choose u to be equal to the j with the components 0 and 1, then the partial derivative, so the directional derivative of the f with respect to the f would be simply uh, the directional derivative of the f in the direction of the j vector would be the partial derivative of the f with respect to the y, right? Because I'm moving only in the y direction. So now let's do an example of, of the directional derivative in any other arbitrarily uh, other direction. So let's say we're given a function in this form and we would like to find, uh, we would like to move in this direction of the unit vector u and we would like to understand how fast the surface is changing, right? How fast this function is changing, the value of the function is changing in this direction. In order to do this, we're going to use the formula of the directional derivative. It's going to be the partial derivative multiplied to the square root of 3 over t plus partial derivative of the f with respect to the y multiplied to the 1 over t. So the partial derivative of the f with respect to the x is 3x squared minus 3y 
right? And the partial derivative of the f with respect to the y, it's minus 3x plus 8y. So I just need to substitute it there. It's going to be the partial derivative of the f in the direction, uh, so directional derivative of the f in the direction of the u vector is equal to the 3x squared minus 3y multiplied to the square root of 3 over t plus 8y minus 3x multiplied to the 1 over 2. So if I evaluate this directional derivative at the point 1 and t, I just need to substitute the 1 instead of x and t instead of y. So I would get 3 multiplied to the 1 minus 3 multiplied to the t multiplied to the square root of 3 over t plus 8 multiplied to the t minus 3 multiplied to the 1 multiplied to the 1 over t. So if I open up the brackets, it's going to be 3 minus 6, it's going to be minus 3 square root of 3 over t. So 16 minus 3 would be 13 over t.